Welcome everyone. I'm Ryan Lothrop with the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife. I'm the Columbia River Fishery Manager and the presentation we'll be walking through on this video is the Upper Columbia and Snake Rivers North of Falcon presentation for your upcoming salmon and steelhead seasons. I'll have additional WDFW staff presenting uh, several portions of this presentation. So uh, first I'd like to introduce Chris Donnelly with Region 1. Go ahead, Chris. You know, Chris Donnelly, the Regional Fish Program Manager stationed in Spokane covering the Snake River Basin. Thank you, Chris. And next up, we have Chad Jackson from Region 2. Hello, my name is Chad Jackson. I'm the Region 2 Fish Program Manager, Manager covering the Upper Columbia River. Thank you, Chad. And last, we have Paul Hofarth. Uh, Paul Hofarth, I'm the District 4 Fish Biologist working out of the Tri-Cities area. All right, thank you, Paul. So what we'll be walking through in this presentation is kind of um, the upcoming uh, North Falcon and Pacific Fishery Management Council schedule and how you can provide comments and thoughts for this year's fisheries. We'll also be providing a little overview of the harvest management jurisdictions that provide guidance to setting the seasons. Forecasts and returns. Last year's actual fishery summaries and then this upcoming year's forecast and proposed fishing seasons. So this slide shows some North of Falcon public meetings that we've already had and upcoming public meetings for the 2022 uh, salmon and steelhead uh, season setting process. So we start off with the forecast meeting statewide on March 4th. The first Pacific Fishery Management Council has already concluded, uh, ran March 8th through the 14th. And then we had the Columbia River first North of Falcon meeting on March 15th, and we had a statewide meeting on the 16th for uh, largely encompassed Puget Sound Coast and the ocean. And then there'll be a follow up Puget Sound Coast and Ocean meeting on March 30th. The second Columbia River North of Falcon meeting on April 1st, and then the final Pacific Fishery Management Council that sets the seasons from April 6th to the 13th. And these all these meetings will be held virtually this year. So we're, as we move on to the harvest management jurisdiction section, this kind of lays the foundation of how seasons are set and how everyone uh, can provide input into fisheries, the, you know, the limitations um, provided from agreements for different parties. Um, so and the federal guidance as we set these seasons. So this figure largely just shows that we have mixed stock fisheries in the ocean. They they migrate um, up and down the coast and uh, far as the Columbia River, we have numerous stocks that come in and they swim through different jurisdictional waters. So uh, first off, you have the Pacific Salmon Commission that basically has a sharing agreement between the US and Canada. Then there's the Pacific Fishery Management Council. Then, so that's the federal waters off the coast. And within, once we get it within the river, we sort of enter the terminal area uh, fishing structure, and that's the North of Falcon. And up in Puget Sound, you can see there's a US v. Washington tribal agreement with the state, and also US v. Oregon within the uh, parties uh, within the Columbia River. And also the note, we do work closely with Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife in setting Columbia River fisheries. So I mentioned the Pacific Salmon Treaty and the Pacific Salmon Commission. This is the US and Canada agreement to carry out fisheries, um, you know, help recover stocks, make sure we have enough fish escaping in, to spawn in each of the uh, party's waters, as well as, as well as provide fishing opportunities. And there are representatives uh, from Canada, Alaska, California, Idaho, Oregon, and Washington involved in this. The Pacific Fishery Management Council, also known as PFMC, is one of eight fishery management councils established by the Magnum, uh, Magnuson Fishery Conservation and Magnuson Act of 1976. And basically, this sets the fishing uh, regulations for the federal waters three to 20, 200 miles offshore, and the state uh, goes concurrent within those waters to the coast. And this sets not just salmon fisheries, but also other fisheries such as rockfish and tuna fisheries. So next we have US v. Washington, that's also known as the Bolt decision. That's basically just the court dec decision providing uh, the rights for Washington treaty tribes to harvest salmon and manage their own fisheries. 
For USV Oregon, that's within the Columbia River. That's uh, a similar court proceeding that uh, determined the uh, Columbia River treaty rights for the Yakima, Nez Perce, Umatilla, and Warm Springs, and the other parties, including Oregon and Washington. And we are currently managing these fisheries based on the, the most recent 10 year agreement that runs through 2027 that determines the treaty and non treaty allocations and allowable ESA impact rates. So, here on this slide, we have the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife and Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife policies that set allocations between recreational and commercial fisheries as well as uh, lower and upriver uh, recreational fisheries. The intent is to have concurrent regulations for harvest allocations and ESA impacts. Since both Oregon and Washington co manage the non treaty fisheries within the Columbia River main stem. Additionally, here we have the Wampum Ban RCW, and that is state law requiring the state provide uh, allocation for salmon for the Wampum Ban for ceremonial and subsistence purposes. Thirdly, we have the Washington Park Fish and Wildlife and Coldwell Confederated Tribes Share Agreement, and this provides a sh uh, harvest sharing. Uh, between the two parties uh, for harvest of salmon and steelhead within the Columbia River and Upper Columbia. And last, we have the Endangered Species Act. This provides protection and limits the amount of impacts that can occur on federally uh, protected fish in this case, and it provides no um, jeopardy to recovering these stocks. So next up here, we have the salmon indicators. Um, this is data generated by NOAA and provided in this table format. It's also known as the stoplight chart. There are both uh, physical and biological indicators as shown on the right, and then kind of the reg regional and basin-wide um, layout as shown on the left. The key part here is you've got a lot of variables that are considered and sampled, and as they improve in condition, they um, score higher on rank, and that can be seen in the green color. The key part to keep in mind is that not all salmon and steelhead um, will react as positively to each of these in indicators as, as other species. So this is more aligned for fall chinook and coho, which are more near shore oriented when they're migrating through the ocean versus sockeye and steelhead that head out to the open ocean. So they may not uh, um, see the benefits as much um, from these indicators. So in 2021, you can see it's ranked second best out of 24 years. What that means is the smolts that hit the ocean last year and ent enter the ocean in very good conditions. And so this is hopefully gonna be a sign of good things to come for some of our stocks that return. So moving on to this year's forecasts and previous year's returns. This slide shows the total upriver salmonids. Um, so that's Chinook, Coho, Sockeye, and Steelhead for above Bonneville Dam. And you can see every year uh, we have kind of a, a change in a total abundance, largely driven by Chinook, but also in previous year's Sockeye and Steelhead. Um, and so the key part here is uh, Back in 2014, 15, we had some really big runs of, of Chinook, and we've kind of bottomed out, hopefully. Um, back in 2018, 2019, we're seeing a little bit of a rebound, and this year's forecast is very similar to the last two years' total returns for upriver salmonids. So, this figure here is the upriver spring Chinook, so that's above Bonneville Dam, and the Snake River Wild ESA component. The red bars indicate the aggregate run abundance of upriver spring Chinook. The black line indicates the wild ESA component as shown. And then you can see two sets of dashed lines. The uh, longer dashed line at the top is the 10 year average, and then the shorter dashed line represents the five year average. And when you see a black dot, that references uh, the 2022 forecast for the wild ESA component, and the blue dot indicates the 2022 forecast. So this year's upriver forecast is 122,900 fish, which is improved from last year's actual return of just shy of 92,000 fish. And so we're kind of coming out of the, the poor returns back in 2018-19 and seeing an upward trend. 
for the upper Columbia uh, spring shrimp numbers, we're seeing a, a, we have a similar improved forecast compared to last year's return. And then for Upper Columbia Summer Chinook, we have a forecast that is basically identical to last year's actual return. And so it's improved from the poor returns from a couple of years ago, but definitely not as high as, you know, back in the, the better years, back in the mid 2010s. So moving on to sockeye, um, there are several stocks that contribute to this, this run. Um, it's the Okanagan stock. Lake Wenatchee, Snake River, Deschutes, and even Yakima River provide some um, sockeye abundance. But to keep in mind, most of the sockeye in this uh, in these bars are referenced by uh, are made up by the Okanagan stock, followed by Lake Wenatchee. So this year's forecast is is improved upon last year's actual return. But um, as we get to a further slide, there are some stocks that are um, um, specifically Lake Wenatchee or uh, poor. Um, we have a lower forecast to work off of. All right, so next up we have the total fall Chinook returns. These are uh, fall Chinook return uh, throughout the Columbia River. Um, and this includes stocks returning to tributaries below Bonneville Dam and above Bonneville Dam. So last year's actual return was 481,200 fall Chinook, and this year's forecast is slightly improved at 484,900 fish, with some stocks seeing an upward trend, such as Bonneville Pool Hatchery, Thule Chinook, and some seeing a, um, less of a return, and, and many stocks seeing similar returns expected. So next up, we have the upriver bright return forecast. Big part of this forecast actually occurs within the Hanford Reach area, but as well as the Snake River. So last year's actual return was right around 240,000, and this year's forecast is a little bit lower, around 230,400 fish. We don't have last year's actual return for Snake River Wild yet, but we'll update that as soon as we can. And this year's forecast for Snake River Wild, the ESA component is 11,000 fish. Next up, we have the ocean abundance for coho that returning to the Columbia River. So ocean abundance refers to prior to any fisheries occurring. So these are estimates prior to ocean fisheries and in river fisheries. Last year's early component actual was 580,274 and last year's late actual was 249,572. So around 820, 30,000 fish, which is quite a good run when you look at the past recent years. This year's forecast is actually improved upon last year's actual, um, just shy of 1 million Columbia River coho prior to any fisheries occurring. So this slide shows the upriver component of the coho um, returns, and these fish are all destined to above Bonneville Dam, and you can see the majority are early stock coho, um, and then there's the late stock that are in the darker green. And we do not have a forecast yet for this, but um, given last year's actu actual returns um, and this year's improved forecast for the total coho abundance, it should be similar to last year's actual returns. And we will monitor the runs as they move upriver. So the next slide here shows the A index component for upriver summer steelhead. So what you could notice here it, and the total hatchery and wild combined is in the bars. And um, you can see last year's return was quite low compared to the recent uh, history of returns and we've been on a downward trajectory. This year's forecast is slightly improved on last year's actual. And the wild component follows a similar trend. So we anticipate we forecasted the uh, 81,000 A index, which will return to Upper Columbia, uh, Snake River, and the uh, mid mid sea rivers. For B index steelhead, these are fish largely destined for the Clearwater and Upper Salmon rivers. Um, last year's actual return was just shy of 12,000 fish, and this year's forecast is slightly improved at 15,600. We saw a stronger 
one ocean salt returns last year, which led to this increased forecast. Even though this forecast is higher than last year, it is still considered a, a low run when you looked at the recent past back into the 2000-2010 returns. So moving on to the fisheries we had last year, I'm not going to walk through these fisheries line by line, but just want to note that we've broken out the stock, so upriver spring snook, summer snook, sockeye, upriver summer steelhead, and, and fall snook out and by area and the season length and days. Several of these fisheries did have emergency rule closures or modifications such as some of the sockeye fisheries do do sockeye catches last year being above what our expectations and quotas were. So diving a bit more into the into the forecast and proposed seasons. Um, Basically, we have a mixed bag of some some better forecasts than recent year returns and some neutral and some poorer. So starting off with upriver spring chinook, this year's forecast, as I mentioned earlier, 122,900 fish. That is 81% of the 10 year average. If the run actually does come into the forecast, that would be the, the best in six years for returns. The Snake River component is 73,400. The Yakima is forecast to have 4,700 spring chinook. And the ice coal is expecting around 2,600 fish to return. And these are all to the Columbia River mouth forecast. For the upper Columbia summer Chinook, the forecast, again, as I stated from earlier, is 57,500, is, which is 83% of the 10 year average and is above the escapement goal of 29,000 to the river mouth. For upriver bright fall Chinook, the forecast is 230,400 and is 55% of the 10 year average. The Hanford Reach has a significant part about this and about 90,700, 90, which half are wild. And the Snake River also has 40,425 forecasted to return this year. For upriver summer steelhead, the total forecast is 96,600. That is well below the 10 year average. And the A index forecast is 81,000, which is also below the 10 year average, as well as the B index. So, moving on to sockeye, this year's sockeye forecast is 198,700, is 87% of the 10 year average. The Okanagan makes up a large part of this forecast at, of 175,700, and Lake Wenatchee makes up the the second largest component at 19,200. So of note that Lake Wenatchee forecast is below the escapement goal of 23,000 fish. Also, we have a WDFW Colville Tribe Harvest Share Agreement for sockeye, and given the run size, the allowable non-treaty harvest quota is 13,449 for the run size of between 150 and 200,000 fish. Due to the Lake Wenatchee uh, forecast being below the escapement goal, the lower river up through Highway 395 will be close to direct harvest. Um, the Highway 395 bridge to Priest Rapids would have a 2,500 fish quota, and from Priest Rapids to Chief Joseph Half Dam um, has a quota of around 10,949. These quotas may go up or down based on run, ups, run size updates in season. We will monitor harvest very closely and the season may close or be modified by emergency rules. So anglers should uh, check the website routinely for updates. Moving on to this year's proposed seasons for 2022 for fisheries below Bonneville Dam. Given the improved forecast um, for both lower and upriver stocks, the lower river spring snook fishery um, prior to the run update is scheduled to be open through April 6th. Summer snook forecasts are very similar to last year, so we expect some limited fishing opportunity for the lower river. Sockeye um, will be closed for the lower river, as previously mentioned on the slide, slide before this. And fall chinook, um, the most constraining and limiting stock in setting that fishery is expected to be the lower river hatchery tules. Lower river fisheries are managed in season and adjusted accordingly. We additionally expect to uh, reserve some Chinook impacts to 
provide uh, a meaningful coho fishery within the buoy pen area. Given we have a, a, such a large forecast to work off of. And moving on to upriver summer steelhead, we expect to have closure with very limited harvest due to the low forecasts and um, and should be very similar to last year's actual fisheries. And the additional item, barbless hooks will be required. For Bonneville Dam up to Highway 395, Spring Chinook uh, fishery has been scheduled to run April 1st through May 5th. Within Wind and Drano, um, it has a one fish limit until further notice and is open. Within the click attack, it will open on April 1st with a one fish limit as well. So please keep an, an eye on the pamphlet for additional information and updated rule changes. Summer Chinook does uh, expect to have a limited fishing opportunity given the forecast is similar to last year. And again, sockeye is closed. Fall Chinook is expected to have a standard fishery um, and will be, will be managed in season. We do expect a large enough forecast to provide a coho directed fishery up above Bonneville Dam. And as previously mentioned, closures for summer steelhead um, due to the uh, low forecast should be very similar to or identical to last year's actual regulations. And barbless hooks are required downstream of the Oregon and Washington state line. Uh, this is Paul Hofarth. I want to give you a quick overview of our planned fisheries for Region 3. So uh, kind of the mid and upper Columbia and also the Yakima River. So I'm going to start off with uh, Spring Chinook and the Yakima River. Uh, we've been unable to open this fishery for the last three years due to low returns. Uh, this year we're looking at an uptick in the forecast. Uh, our preseason forecast is for roughly 4,700 adult Chinook including 2,800 uh, Cleolum hatchery fish. And so these numbers are sufficient to open a fishery this year. Uh, we were planning to open up two sections, uh, one in the lower river from Highway 240 there in Richland upstream to the State Route 241 bridge in Sunnyside, and also a second section from uh, Highway 223 at Union Gap up to Rosa. Um, Right now, the plan is to open the lower river fishery around the 1st of May, coinciding with the return. And then the upper section around May 15th as those fish start to reach that upper section of the Yakima River. Both of these fisheries would open by emergency regulation. Uh, so we'll start looking, oh, in late April, early May uh, for the posting of this regulation. This will be hatchery Chinook only, uh, similar to most of our other spring Chinook fisheries. Uh, as been mentioned, uh, both summer Chinook and sockeye returns are looking good this year. Uh, we do have an allocation for the Tri-Cities area. Uh, from Highway 395 to 182, uh, we'll be closed to salmon fishing, except uh, we are doing a bank fishery this year from the I-182 bridge down to the downstream point of Columbia Point. Uh, that should run from roughly mid-June through mid-July, corresponding to the sockeye, sockeye migration. So really great opportunity for bank anglers so you'll have it to yourselves uh, no boat fishing between those two bridges uh, from interstate 182 upstream to priest rapids dam this is our usual uh, summer salmon fishery in the tri-cities area hopes to be open from june 16 till august 15th barring any early closures due to reductions in the quota uh, daily limit will be six salmon but only two adults so your adults can be two sockeye two hatchery chinook or one of each. Um, adult Chinook are anything 24 inches or greater. Adult sockeye are any sockeye. So be aware that all those sockeye count towards your adult limit. Uh, you do need to release all your wild adult Chinook. Uh, you can keep any jacks. Uh, we will allow uh, two poles if you have the two pole endorsement and you can fish with barbed hooks. Uh, once again, these fisheries are managed on a quota. Preseason quota for our area is 2,500 sockeye. That assumes we're going to get those 200,000 sockeye back to the Columbia River. Uh, that quota can adjust up or down. Uh, I would strongly encourage you to check the WDFW website for emergency regulations before you get out on the water each morning. Uh, moving on to fall Chinook fisheries. Uh, the Yakima River is planned to be closed again preseason. Uh, this will be the third year of really low returns of fall Chinook back to the Yakima River. 
Uh, similar to the past two years, we'll monitor that fish, those fish as they come back into the Yakima River. Uh, we do get fish counts at Prosser. Uh, if we see an uptick in those returns and they're sufficient to open that fishery, we'll open it up by emergency rule this fall. Uh, Hanfer Reach is looking good once again. Uh, roughly 91,000 adults, half hatchery, half wild. Uh, daily limits, restrictions are similar to past years. That's a six salmon limit, only two adults. Uh, coho or Chinook and hatchery or wild. Um, you can use two poles. If you have the two pole endorsement, you can use barbed hooks. Uh, this will be the second year of adult coho returns to Ringgold Springs hatchery. Uh, this past year, we had 2,800 coho return to the hatchery. Uh, we'll hopefully we'll get those kinds of numbers again uh, because we do have these coho coming back and they're a little later returning than the fall Chinook. So these things are starting to come back in mid to late October. We're going to extend that fishery through the end of December in that lower section of the Hanford Reach. So that's from really the Highway 395 bridge up to the old Hanford Town site power line crossing. So that will be open late. Now the upstream area, uh, old Hanford Town site upstream to Priest Rapids Dam will close on October 15th as per usual. Uh, another really great thing this year, uh, we're, everybody's hoping for that uptick in steelhead returns. Uh, likewise, for Ringgold Springs hatchery produced fish, we're hoping for that uptick. Uh, we're going to go ahead and open it up in the pamphlet this year from the Interstate 182 bridge upstream to the Hanford Town site power line crossing. Uh, that'll be effective October 1. It'll be in the pamphlet uh, running through the spring. Uh, it will be restricted to Ringgold Springs hatchery steelhead. That is, those fish are double clipped. They're adipose clipped and right ventral fin clipped. And so only those Ringgold Springs origin steelhead can be kept for the duration of the fishery. Uh, we'll, we will be monitoring this fishery very closely. Uh, by mid-November, we should have a pretty good handle on the size of our population this year. Uh, so we're keeping our fingers crossed, uh, but if those numbers don't materialize, uh, we will be looking at an early closure. Um, if you want any more information on these Region 3 fisheries, uh, call the regional office in Yakima and they'll put you in touch with the district biologist or they may be able to handle uh, your uh, questions over the phone. Thank you. Hello, this is Chad Jackson again. I'll be talking about the salmon fisheries in the upper Columbia River, which is between Priest Rapids and Chief Joseph Dams. I'll start with Spring Chinook. For the Icicle River, there's a much improved, although very preliminary, forecast of about 2,600 adults. Since this is the first really good forecast we've seen in about three years, we're going to keep the Icicle River closed. We're going to watch the run materialize. And if it holds up, we'll open up the emergency rule just as soon as we can, and hopefully in May. Moving on to the main stem Columbia River summer Chinook and sockeye seasons. Like last year, seasons will be listed in the 2022-2023 sport fishing rules pamphlet. So check the pamphlet for complete details. But just to give you a preview, we'll be looking at a daily limit of six salmon, no more than two adult hatchery Chinook, and no more than two sockeye. Release wild adult Chinook, as well as coho. Uh, two poles will be allowed, as well as barbed hooks. Uh, seasons, Priest Rapids Dam and the Rock Island Dam will begin July 1st and conclude August 31st. Rock Island Dam to Wells Dam will open July 1st as well, close October 15th. Wells Dam to the Brewster Bridge will open up a little later on July 16th and close a little sooner on September 30th. That's to provide protection for ESA listed Spring Chinook on the front end and Summer Steelhead on the back end. The Brewster Bridge up to just below Chief Joseph Dam will also be open July 1st through October 15th. Moving on to sockeye, Ryan discussed earlier about the sockeye quotas based off the preseason forecast. The Upper Columbia between Priest Rapids Dam, the Chief Joseph Dam is just under 11,000 fish and that's 81.4% of the total quota. Um, as the run starts to materialize, we'll adjust quotas up and down as necessary. We're also gonna be harvest, monitoring the harvest very closely. Uh, last year, we actually over harvested sockeye by about 4,600 fish. Uh, we saw what wasn't out of the ordinary um, high effort, but what we did see was probably on average kind of unprecedented success across the fishing fleet. Um, we, as we go forward, we may consider shorter seasons to start with so we can monitor a little closer. We may close down through emergency regulation so we can 
uh, as to mater harvest. We'll just we'll be discussing that more internally and there'll be something more finalized as the regulations come out. So with that, seasons may suddenly close by emergency rules. We advise anglers to check the website routinely for updates. And then lastly, we're very interested in the anglers thoughts on sockeye fishing boundaries. In other words, should it be like last year where Priest Rapids Dam clear up the Chief Joe were open and as soon as we hit the quota, we shut down. Maybe should we only fish above Rock Island Dam or maybe should we focus all of that effort in the Brewster Pool? We'd be curious to know what anglers think about that as we do have some flexibility with that season. Moving on to our tributary summer Chinook seasons. Like last year, tributary seasons will be listed in the 2022 2020, 2023 sport fishing rules pamphlet. So please check the pamphlet for more details. There'll be a daily limit of six salmon, no more than two adult hatchery Chinook. Release wild adult Chinook, sockeye, and coho. The only exception will be for the Enyat River, which I'll talk about here in a second. Uh, we're Natchee River. We're looking at a season of August 1st through September 30th. There'll be a night closure. Selective gear rules, but bait will be allowed. For the Enyat River, this is a special situation where historically there was never a summer Chinook population there, and it's only become established with the inundation um, from the construction of hydroelectric dams. Uh, the salmon population or the summer Chinook population that is in there is all hatchery origin, and they do have an impact on listed spring Chinook. So the season that begins July 16th and runs through September 30th is a daily limit of six Chinook. Doesn't matter if they're adipose clipped, adipose intact, adults are jacked, just a minimum size of 12 inches and release all other salmon. There'll be a night closure as well as barbed hooks will be allowed. Moving further upstream to the Chelan River, that season begins July 16th and will run through October 15th. Night closure, barbed hooks will also be allowed. Moving further upstream to the Okanagan River, so the mouth uh, to Highway 97 Bridge, we typically have the same season as the Brewster Pools, so that will be a July 1st through October 15th. There will be a night closure, an anti-snagging rule, but two poles will be allowed with a two-pole endorsement. Moving upstream from Highway 97 Bridge to the Malot Bridge, that season opens up July 1st, runs through October 15th. Then upstream of the Malot Bridge will run July 1st through September 15th. Both those areas have night closures and anti-snagging rules. So Milkameen River, the last tributary salmon season, July 1st through September 15th, night closure and anti-snagging rule. Moving on to Lake Wenatchee Sockeye, this will be a to be, de to be determined. As Ryan mentioned earlier, the preseason forecast is less than the minimum 28,000. That's a 23,000 escapement goal plus 5,000 for harvest. Preferred abundance that we like to see before opening a season. So we'll be monitoring the run in season as we always have done. And if we end up uh, coming above the forecast and allowing for a season, we'll open that by emergency rule. That usually occurs in late July, sometimes even early August. Moving on the fall Chinook, uh, seasons again will be put in the 2022-2023 sport fishing rules pamphlet, so check the pamphlet for details. This will be a daily limit of six salmon, no more than two adult Chinook, and these don't have to be adipose clipped. They can be adipose clipped or intact. Release all other salmon other than Chinook. Uh, two poles will be allowed as well as barbed hooks, and this is a season primarily between Priest Rapids and Rock Island Dam that will run from September 1st through October 15th. Moving on to coho and steelhead, they'll be to be determined and will be based off of abundances over Priest Rapids Dam. Coho is a much greater likelihood as we are seeing a pretty good forecast for the Columbia River. Um, these seasons will be usually in the main stem during the last couple of weeks of the summer Chinook fishery and in the Icicle River. Steelhead is much um, less likelihood. Steelhead are still kind of rebounding. They're kind of the last species we're seeing um, with a uptick in their run size, but we will determine that in season and we'll open if necessary by emergency rule. I'm Chris Donley, Regional Fish Program Manager for Region 1, and I will go over anticipated fisheries for salmon and steelhead in the Snake River Basin. Starting off this spring, we'll have spring Chinook fishery. We have a slightly greater allocation of fish to the Snake Basin than we had last year. We plan to open fisheries at Little Goose and Ice Harbor, likely for two days per week. Um, given what we have for an allocation, 
folks should anticipate that there won't be any weekend days included in those. The daily limit would be six salmon, only one of which would be an, an adult that would be allowed to be retained. For fall Chinook, the bulk of our fishery in the Snake Basin occurs in the Clarkston area upstream to the Idaho-Oregon border. Fishermen should anticipate an opener on August 18th that will go through October 31st. We put this rule out under emergency rule, generally sometime in early August. The daily limit should be three adult Chinook with no limit on jacks. I say should be because we still negotiate this fishery with Idaho Fish and Game. Anglers should check the emergency rules to ensure that that will be the final rule as we put the rule out in early August. Below Lower Granite Dam, we've typically been fishing for fall Chinook under a mark selective fishery. Uh, we have a different permit with NOAA and anticipate that we might have a small non-selective fishery option for this year. And the opener for that would be somewhere around mid-August, just like the Clarkston area. For steelhead, given what we've talked about uh, for low forecasts, anglers should anticipate that we will have to evaluate that run as it comes through Bonneville Dam and adjust seasons through emergency rules. We typically have this done by the 1st of September to allow anglers to fish during Labor Day, um, but these seasons could include reduced limits, size restrictions, and area closures similar, similar to what we saw in 2021. As a reminder to all steelhead anglers in the Columbia Basin, not specifically just the Upper Columbia or the Snake River, since 2017, we've had a number of fishery limitations based primarily on low B run and A run forecasts and actual returns. Those fisheries were structured with block closures to be protective of fish as they progressed upstream. By that, we mean we make limit fisheries in all of the pools from the mouth of the Columbia River up to ensure that we get sufficient passage of both wild and hatchery fish into the upper tributaries. Last year was no different. We saw record low returns in 2021. Anglers should expect similar season structures to, 20, to 2021 during the steelhead fishery in 2022. We don't anticipate that the slight uptick in steelhead numbers will result in much more liberal fisheries than what we offered in 2021. So the season structure for 2022 will include rolling block closures from the mouth of the Columbia beginning in August, continuing upstream. There is a consideration for the main stem to remain closed for most of the run, July through March in some areas, and that night closures will be instituted. At tributary mouths, for example, Drano Lake or the mouth of the Wind River, these will be closed primarily to steelhead fisheries that will um, run consecutive with the rolling block closures in the main stem. Anglers should not expect to have steelhead harvest directed fisheries in those cold water areas such as Drano Lake, Wind River, or the Big White Salmon. As far as the Snake Basin goes, we will watch the run as it passes Bonneville, but the anglers should expect no open fishing or abbreviated seasons on the major proportion of the Snake River and its tributaries. As Chad had uh, alluded to earlier in this presentation, it's very unlikely that we will have summer steelhead fisheries in the upper Columbia above Priest Rapids Dam or in the tributaries, including the Wenatchee and Matthau Eniod. So what can you take away from this? There's likely going to be abbreviated harvest limits in the areas that are open. However, if the return comes in higher than anticipated, we will offer more liberal opportunities. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any comments or questions, our contact information is listed on this slide. We appreciate your attention to fishery setting in the Upper Columbian Snake Basin and wish you the best of fishing over the coming months.